Haribol Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very, very much for your association. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you can take the call of um, Can you hear me? Yes, you do. Clear? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I've, had, I've been having trouble with my audio the last couple of days, so let me know if it, if it sort, of, sort of falls off. Okay, uh, yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 6, Chapter 2. X9, 10, and 11. The 10 is around the Yamadudas and the Vishnu Dudas deciding the fate of Ajamya. Dena Sudapo Mitro Drug, Ramaha Guru Taupagaha, Sri Rajam Priti Gohanta, Ye Chepata Kino Pare, Sarvesham Apyagavatam. Idamevam sunistritam namavararanam vishnur itastad vishnaya matahi. Translation. The chanting of the holy name of Vishnu is the best process for atonement for a thief of gold and other valuables, for a drunkard for one who betrays a friend or a relative, for one who kills a brahmana, or for one who indulges in sex life with the wife of a guru or another superior. It is also the best method of atonement for one who murders women, the king or his father, one who slaughters cows, and for all other sinful men. Simply by chanting the holy name of Lord Vishnu, such sinful persons may attract the attention of the Supreme Lord, Therefore, considers this because this man has chanted my holy name, my duty is to give him protection. Naskrita udita Brahma Vadi V, Naniskrita udita Brahma Vadi V, Tatavisu Yatyaga Vandra Tadavihi. Yata Hare Nama Pada Udahritais Taruta Masloka Guna Palambakam. By following the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies and undergoing atonement, sinful men do not become as purified as by chanting the holy name of Lord Hari. Although ritualistic atonement may free one from sinful reactions, it does not awaken devotional service unlike the chanting of the holy names of the Lord, which reminds one of the Lord's fame, qualities, attributes, pastimes, and paraphernalia. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments that the chanting of the holy name of the Lord has special significance that distinguishes it from the Vedic ritualistic sermons of atonement for severe more severe or most severe sinful action. There are 20 types of religious scriptures called Dharma Shastras, beginning with the Manu Samhita and Parasara Samhita, but herein it is stressed that although one may become free from the reactions of most sinful activities, by following the religious principles of these scriptures, this cannot promote a sinful man to the stage of loving service to the, to the Lord. On the other hand, chanting of the holy name of the Lord even once not only frees one immediately from the reactions of the greatest sins, but also raises one to the platform of rendering loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is described as Uttama Sloka because he is famous for his glorious activities. Thus, one serves the Lord by remembering his form, his attributes, and his pastimes. Shila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that this is all possible 
simply by chanting the Lord's holy name because the Lord is, because of the Lord's omnipotence. What cannot be achieved through the performance of Vedic rituals can be easily achieved through the chanting of the Lord's holy name. To chant the holy name and dance in ecstasy is so easy and sublime that one can achieve all the benefits of spiritual life simply following this process. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu declares, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. All glories to Sri Krishna Sankirtan. The Sankirtan movement, which we have started, offers the best process for becoming purified of all sinful reactions and become immediately to the platform of spiritual life. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So people are inclined to perform ritualistic ceremonies and spending large amounts of money and making gorgeous arrangements. Thinking by these the ceremonies, they can be free from the reactions of their sinful activities and elevate themselves upward. Of course, it does mention there is some relief from the sinful activities, but the puja has to be performed according to the rules and regulations perfectly. With the Brahmas, Brahmins chanting the mantras correctly, and the fire, you know, being organized where it continues to go. In other words, it can't be any discrepancy. It's like the other day we were doing a particular yagya. It was of a vivaha yagya, and that was a marriage yagya. Unfortunately, the uh, priest could not read the uh, scriptures that he was reading from because of poor eyesight, and he kept missing some of the mantras that needed to be chanted. So it was kind of awkward to see, to hear that. But, and we know that when you perform these ceremonies, in order to get the best results of it, it has to be chanted properly. But the chanting of the holy name, even if it do, is done in what is called namabas, it's like people see us on the streets and sometimes they say, oh, Hare Krishna, and they're, they're happy to see a devotee. And uh, they wave and they just say Hare Krishna because they think they're greeting us. But they're getting what is called a Gyata Sukriti. They're getting some benefit automatically simply by chanting the name Hare Krishna. And there are many such examples how people chant the holy names of the Lord. You know, what we say unconsciously more without intention, or jokingly, or derisively. And still, they get, and this is where you see Ajamil fits in there. He, he called the name of Narayan in a helpless condition without any preconceived idea of trying to be free from the reactions of his sinful activities. And he remembered Narayan when he heard his name he, calling Narayan. And by remembering the Narayan, he got Namabas. And he was actually free from all the reactions of his sinful activities. And as here it says, Krishna says, my duty is to give that person protection. And he got protection. And Krishna arranged for him to go to the holy place of Pardwar on the banks of the Ganga River in the most highest places in the Himalayas, and uh, finished his life and went back home, back to Godhead. 
And that was the name of Narayan. The name of Krishna is even more powerful than the name of Narayan. Both are completely absolute and powerful. But in Krishna's name, name all of the qualities, pastimes, forms, attributes, paraphernalia, names, everything is there. And the Krishna, the Krishna's name is the total manifestation of the Godhead in sound, non-different than Krishna. The one who chants the holy name of the Lord, even just like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati would sometimes receive criticism in the form of a letter or an article about the movement. And he would immediately count how many times they said Hare Krishna or just Krishna in the article. And then he would say, oh, this is a very good article. They spoke it five times because they get some benefit, although they are speaking in a different way. So this is, uh, this is the mercy of the holy name. Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namari Gauda Tristana Maha. Mahaprabhu is the manifestation of the most mercy incarnation of the Lord. And he's making the process of devotional service so easily available to anyone and everyone. And at the same time, he's elevating one to the platform of Vrindavan, if they seriously take that, that, that activity as their life and soul. In other words, if they take up the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So we should understand here is the, the formula. When Srila Prabhupada was in, uh, was in Vrindavan in 1975, it was Ram Nomi, and Prabhupada had uh, finally finished the completion of the Krishna Balaram temple, and it was a temple opening ceremony to be performed. And Prabhupada uh, would invite all of the Mahants and the priests and some of the sadhus from the local temples, from the local uh, area, to come and give their blessings and also give their approval because our temple wasn't so popular and it was considered to be a, you know, a white man's temple. <laughs> Here we are in Vrindavan. And so in order to uh, authorize our movement and show that our movement is actually part of the Vedic scheme, Prabhupada uh, perform very elaborate, costly sacrifices uh, that went on for hours just to uh, satisfy uh, the, uh, the sages and the priests who had come. The Prabhupada writes, and you'll come to that verse, it's in the third chapter of this uh, same canto, Prabhupada writes in the purport, that we could have simply had kirtan, and that would have been sufficient to open up the temple, but they wouldn't have took our movement seriously. And so he went through this whole uh, arrangement just to uh, make them satisfied because they're all, many of them are ritualistic brahmanas, or persons who are absorbed in this type of puja. And so, and of course, what they do is also authorized by the Vedas. But ultimately is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, when it's done with attention and devotion, it can purify the entire atmosphere. Here you see uh, such sinful people uh, indulging in various types of heinous activities, slaughtering of cows, uh, murdering women, drunken, indulging in sex life with a superior, a superior's wife. So many abominable forms of activities that had such great sinful, heavy karma attached to it, suffering. But simply by, if one chants the holy name of the Lord, seriously, without now, one cannot chant the holy names of the Lord and perform sinful activities intentionally. That was not our Jamil's situation. 
he wasn't aware that he was actually performing sinful activities. He was thinking he was just maintaining his family. And when he chanted the holy name of Narayan helplessly, he chanted without the preconceived idea of getting free from his sinful activity. He was simply calling his son, who he had named Narayan. And because he called in a helpless condition, he was saved. And this is the essence of this particular Leela here. We see how the Yamadudas, they are very diligent in carrying out the orders of Yamaraj. They are his faithful servants. And sometimes people think that these persons are not real, but We've had numerous incidents in our in this in our society and in the lives of people who we have come in contact with that they see these people at the time of death. Uh, for instance, we had uh, one of our um, devotees' father. He was a, what we call a macho person. He likes to, you know, live out in the wilderness, roughing it up. And he was a hunter also. So um, he was sick and he got to the point where he was leaving his body. And while he was dying, he was, his, he was experienced very fearful experience. What was that? He was seeing the Yamadudas and he was yelling to his wife in a very emotional way, bring my gun, they're coming, bring my gun. So he was thinking he could shoot the Amadudas. But it's not like that. There's another story where one devotee was in the hospital and he, would, he was near people in other beds that were dying and they were going through some very frightful experience and seeing the Amadudas. So these persons are real, but they're not for the devotees. They're for those who perform sinful activities or material activities and do not take up devotional service. That's why Yamaraj later on will instruct his uh, followers, you don't go near the devotees. <laughs> only those who do not chant the holy names of the Lord, only those who perform materialistic activities, they are candidates for your service. <laughs> so here we can see how... Uh, how merciful the chanting of the holy names of the Lord is. But we should very carefully understand that whenever there is a positive injunction, there is a negative counterpart in order to get the benefit of the positive. So we recite every day in our temples, and Prabhupada was very enthusiastic to have the ten offenses to the holy name recited during the initiation ceremony. And so this recitation of these the 10 offenses, one should know those 10 offenses, one should recite them, one should understand what each one means, and one should carefully avoid them. If we, if we can do that, then we, our chanting will make nice progress and we'll be qualified to go back home and back to Godhead. So, but here we're dealing with something a little even more merciful, is that simply by namabas, the unconscious chanting of the holy names of the Lord, um, one can free themselves from all sinful activities. And as it says here, attract the attention of the Supreme Lord, who will give that person protection. So we uh, should understand this is the mercy manifestation of Krishna in its ultimate uh, state, and that there's nothing more merciful than the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and there's nothing more merciful than how it relieves one from sinful activity. But one cannot consciously say, well, I'll perform some sinful activity, I'll smoke some, some marijuana, or I'll, uh, I'll uh, have a few beers, or I'll, uh, you know, that girl looks pretty good. Um, 
In other words, start to think in terms of enjoying sinful activities and then at the same time think, well, now that I perform the sinful activities, I'll get rid of the reactions. Prabhupada said, no, this is actually the seventh offense to the holy name. And one will not only not get the relief, but one will one will, will have to suffer even more thinking that the holy name will free one from the reactions. So if it's done like Ajamil, he did it unconsciously, he did it unknowingly, therefore he got free. But one who knows what sinful activities are and chance with the idea to counteract the, the results is um, nam nam balay, nam nam yasha bala papa budhi. Papa means sinful, budhi means the great. It's a great sinful uh, activity to think one can take advantage of Krishna's mercy and the holy name and go on with the materialistic sinful activities. But here, we see how merciful the holy name is. So one should chant regularly, one should chant with enthusiasm, one should not limit themselves to a number. One should uh, one should uh, have a number that they will do every day, but they should always think, why not chant more? They should chant more. I can stay in contact with Krishna. I can develop my chanting even more. I can be free from my mind, which is always giving me trouble. So we have a, a lot of mercy here. And, and Prabhupada talks about this, about how, how, this, how these other forms of atonement fall short and don't bring one to the stage of connecting with Krishna. And they give some temporary result. When Prabhupada was in the place in India called Nellar, 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 uh, one very respectable, quite wealthy uh, family wanted Prabhupada to do a deity installation. And uh, the lady of the family commissioned Prabhupada and his disciples to come and officiate the ceremony. And Prabhupada came, he was very gracious and he wanted to satisfy her. But then he saw this whole situation with all of these uh, smart brahmanas and all the arrangements. He could, he could understand that this was just some show just to impress others. So, uh, Prabhupada knew that simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we could, uh, we could perform the, the ceremony. But he said to the lady, he, was, he said to his assistant, actually, he said, please give me a conch shell full of milk. It was a beauty installation. So he, and he had the Brahma Samhita prayers recited. And while he was doing that, for 15 minutes, Prabhupada just poured milk over the deities. And after 15 minutes, he said, Didi is installed. And the lady, she was not, she was amazed, unsatisfied, thinking that the ritual would go on for hours and everyone would be impressed to how elaborate it is and how genuine it is. But Prabhupada didn't want to be part of this. Uh, the show. So he said, just give me some milk and a cocktail. So yeah. So but Prabhupada always says that in any of these ceremonies, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra must go on. Like if you're doing deity worship or if you're doing uh, any kind of pujas, the holy name must accompany as part of the ceremony, whether it's Vivaha Samskara, Upanaya Samskara, or any of the Samskaras, the chanting of the Holy Name must be there to purify the atmosphere and make the Samskara, what we say, successful or authorized. So um, one cannot. Uh, 
over evaluate the glories of the holy name. Um, one of my god brothers, he was telling me one time that he was doing counseling. And um, this was in one of the bigger yachts in Europe. And uh, many of his disciples and others were coming to him with problems. So he was trying his best to, to listen to their problems and offer solutions. But this was going on quite regularly. And then he saw that after some time, you know, the problems were not going away and people were still coming for advice. So he decided uh, to do a little austerity. He's, he decided to give every class that he gives, every no matter what class it is, he will give it on the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. And he said, I did that for one year. For a whole year, I just spoke on the holy name, that's all. And after one year, 50% of the problems went down, even more. So one can never, but of course, chanting the holy name is not about solving problems. It's about awakening our attraction for Krishna, our attachment for Krishna, and developing our love for Krishna. But chanting is, uh, it is the best of all activities. It is the highest expression of devotion. I have a, a statement I'll read. And, uh, and in that reading, I'll, um, this is from Srila Bhakti Vinod Dakur, glorifying the chanting of the holy name. Um, let me see, where is it? Okay, here we go. There is no vow like chanting the holy name. Oh, wait a minute, let me get it. focus this a little bit better here. Mm -hmm. There is no vow like chanting the holy name. No penance is equal to it, and nothing is as potent and nothing is as potent or nothing is as potent or as the holy name chanting is the greatest act of piety and the words of the Vedas do not possess sufficient power to glorify its magnitude. Chanting is the highest path of liberation. It is the pinnacle of devotion, the heart's uh, joy, the attraction, and the best form of remembrance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Whoever well, continues to chant the whole, thing. let me see. Uh, let me do this again because I'm not getting the whole thing. Okay. Here we go. Try again here. There, here we go. This is from Bhakti Vinata Kaur's Harinam Chintamani. There is no vow like chanting the holy name. 
No knowledge is superior to it. No meditation which comes anywhere near it. And it gives the highest result. No penance is equal to it. And nothing is as potent or as powerful as the holy name. Chanting is the greatest act of piety and the supreme refuge. Even the words of the Vedas do not possess sufficient power to describe, to describe its magnitude. Chanting is the highest path of liberation, peace, and eternal life. It's the pinnacle of devotion, the heart's joyous proclivity and attraction, and the best form of remembrance of the Supreme Lord. The holy name has appeared solely for the benefit of the living entities as their Lord and Master, their supreme worshipful object, and their spiritual guide and mentor. Whoever continuously chants the holy name of the Lord, even in his sleep, can easily realize that the name is a direct manifestation of Krishna himself, in spite of the influences of the age of Kali. So that's from Bhakti Vinota Kaur Harinam Shantanamani. Okay, so we'll stop there and see where we go from here. Thank you, Maharaj. It was very, very nice. Very always so easy to understand your class. Maharaj, one thing I think I learned for the first time from the Ajamela is that, did I hear correctly? You said all the offenses that he committed, he he did he wasn't aware that they were um, a mistake with unknowingly he was doing that these are sins. Like, yeah, yeah, even though he was a Brahmana. From, from I said that. I heard it today in a lecture, Baba said he. Oh, so he wasn't aware that uh, neglecting his wife or being with her, a society girl is not the right thing to do. Okay. He was simply immersed in material life and thinking that that's the way it is. Okay. Thank you. Um, he was doing simple activities. He was actually acting acting even in a criminal way, but he was thinking, thinking this is what I need for my livelihood. Uh, this is, yeah, you have, if you listen to Srila Prabhupada's lecture on um, the same verse that I just uh, spoke, I think it's verse number eight. We did verse nine, 10, and 11, but verse eight in the same chapter, if you listen to Prabhupada's lecture on that verse, which is a prelude to these verses, he talks about Ajamil being somewhat oblivious to the fact that he was committing sinful activity. Sure, thank you, Maharaj. Devotees, you may unmute yourself. I see um, Shugakara Prabhuji, if you would like to go ahead. Sundar Maharaj, Maharaj ki jai ho, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Excuse me, I'm humble again that you know to speak. Maharaj, now, as you said that the holy name is uh, so powerful. So for the Kali Yuga, if you are chanting more rounds and all, this Shraddha ceremony and all for father-in-law need not be done. We can just keep chant more rounds for that. Or we have to go for the ritualistic ceremony of father's Shraddha ceremony. Every month we do the Tarpanam and all. No, no Knowing that in Kali Yuga, the chanting is the most important. If we chant another 16 rounds, will it be okay? Or what do you, what is your expert comments? Yeah, and if you do the Shraddha ceremony, just accompany it with the whole chanting of the holy name. Ah. Include that as part of the ceremony. Take Mahaprabhu did the ceremony also for his departed father. 
Oh, so beyond that, we have to chant. We have to do that and then chant. And make it as part of the ceremony. Okay. with the golden age i am just uh, very confident the whole world will chant like shri prabhupada spread and the whole thing the whole world now the golden age is there i think all of us trying our best i think the whole world will again start chanting in a big way and uh, it will become completely scorn moment all over the world and that's what my visual thinking the uh, there is lord chaitanya's plan <laughs> And it will be Vaikuta on earth. We seek your blessings, Maharaj. This the proper disciple. The blessing is. <laughs> Maharaj, we have your ardent devotee. Scarlett Mataji joining us from Sweden, Gothenburg. Mataji, Scarlett Mataji, please go ahead with your question. Can you unmute? Yeah. You got muted again. Yeah. Hi, Krishna. Please accept my obeisances and all glories to share Prabhupada, all glories to you, Your Holiness, Chandra Uh I heard something about Puja. Uh, you named something about Puja. Since I am very new in this situation now, uh, I don't know how to do it. I, is it okay that I don't do any puja at home? Is it okay if I just read and chant and do the garland that I used to do uh, every Friday? Or yes. I must do? You should have a little, little. you have a little altar in your home? Mm -hmm. uh, if you can call it altar, I have a, a carpet behind me. There's a little door. I have a picture there, and sometimes I do pray and uh, uh, and give some incense. Incense. Uh, the only thing I know how to do. That's sufficient. That's nice. If you do it regularly, you do it with sincerity. It's devotion. Yeah. You have to. We have to work according to our circumstance. And if we don't have much facility, we can always do something. And whatever we do, if we do it with attention and regularity, then that's, that is acceptable. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. My next question is the books. As I have learned all the books like uh, Bhagavad Gita, Shema Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and all the prophet books are very holy and I shouldn't have it uh, around like the, uh, when I'm not reading it, of course. It has to be inside the cupboard and covered. Is it right? Keep it in a clean place. Keep it in a clean place, and then when you use it, take it out, and you're done. Put it back. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Um, devotees, feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself and. Um, Put, feel free to put your cameras on. You know, it will be nice to see you all. I know that's what Maharaj wants. Uh, thank you, Mataji. Uh, I, as usual, I would like to 
<laughs> give sure. some of my realization uh, then what pranam chandra mauli uh, swami maharaj and uh, all the vaisnavas uh, you know whenever i hear some discourses i like there are some shlokas which come to my mind <laughs> and i would like to express since it's srimad bhagavatam shloka this is in 11th canto the shloka is uh, dehi durlabho maduso deho dehi nam krush so in this slok says that you know we got this durlab manus janma we got this body which is so durlab on top of that <laughs> it is kshan bhangur arthadam also so more durlab than that is to have a darshan of a vaikuntha priya darshanam the vaikuntha priya darshanam is our maharaj chandra mauli swami and great devotees of lord sri krishna so uh, when we are chanting lord krishna becomes pleased with us and what he does he brings in contact with vaikuntha priya darshanam all vaishnavas great vaishnavas and especially every morning we get such exalted vaishnava from all over the world you know? so that's our great fortune Uh, because of our chanting and bhagwan krishna uh, uh, has given us such a nice uh, uh, you know facility in kaliyug that we can talk to chandra mauli maharaj from thousands of miles away <laughs> by zoom and all that so i i i felt that you know we are getting such exalted vaishnavas every morning and what is more fortunate than that so i just wanted to express my gratitude for that thank you very much for allowing to speak hari bol Very, very association with devotees is the is the is the essence by which we can taste the nectar of Krishna consciousness. Thank you. Hare uh, Krishna. Thank you for Madananda Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my obeisance. It's all glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Very nice glorification of. Thank you so much for your association. Thank you. Um, Ayan Prabhu, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Uh, I have a question that, uh, do we need to be initiated to uh, worship Archavigraha? Um, formal worship, yeah. But you can do home worship. So in your home, you can establish your little, little temple. You can get pictures of the Lord, pictures of the Panchatattva, pictures of Sri Prabhupada, and offer some simple incense, some flower, like that. And so home worship can be done. And you have to understand whether it's simple or elaborate. That's not the criteria for judging. It's how it's done. So if you do it with devotion and attention regularly every day, it's bhakti. So according to your means and your situation, you can establish a certain level of puja. Now, once you get initiated, then you can also ask your spiritual master if we will. You know, allow you to worship deities in your home. Or then, you can still worship the Lord in His picture form. The picture is not different than the Lord, also. Wherever you see the form of the Lord, the Lord is there. So yeah. Anyone can worship accordingly. 
ओके महाराज थैंक यू महाराज धन्यवाद प्रणाम प्लीज प्लीज हरे कृष्ण um nala hari prabhu ji you may ask your question please uh hari krishna maharaj uh, please accept my obeisances all glories to shila prabhat uh, thank you for your association today morning maharaj uh, i wanted to uh, uh, you know inquire from your good self uh, for a practitioner what would be the best way to overcome pride and arrogance within their heart Vaishnava, by serving the Vaishnavas and trying to please the Vaishnavas by seva, one will become naturally free from this false identification with the body. One will start to become naturally feel the qualities of humility, and patience, pridelessness. Service of the Vaishnavas is the is the antidote for many of the problems we have, especially false pride. We want to be served, and that is a first part of the element of false pride, is wanting to be the object of service. But a devotee wants to serve and also wants to please others in the process of serving. But think of how you can please the devotee, associate with devotees, and find ways to serve. And that will uh, that, that will reduce the false pride automatically. When we think we're when we realize how small we are, we don't have any problems. If we think we're important, then uh, Krishna will reject us because we are we're jiva. Jiva is small, and how many jivas are there? It's uncountable. We're one of the many unlimited numbers of jivas. And if we, we see, we can always see how often we make mistakes, do the wrong things, say the wrong things, act in the wrong way. We can just see how uh, full of faults we are. We observe, we can also see our own faults. So we should not be proud of any success or any position we may have, whether it's coming by good birth or some good material situation. And all these things are based on the idea that I am this body and the success of my life means to uh, fortify these these principles of bodily uh, you know, fulfillment. I guess, yeah. And practice chanting of the holy names. Janata peace and each a night, I only vasa hishnana. Amani nam amani de na kirtaniya sadhana. So humility, tolerance, pridelessness, respect for others. Allows one to chant the holy names of the Lord continuously. So we have to practice that. We all have some element of pride that comes with something in our life that causes us to feel like that. But we have to know that it's also temporary and it's also a gift of the Lord. So sometimes we say, why be proud of uh, something that Someone else, gives, someone gives you some money, and you think, "Wow, I'm rich now." And you're proud of the fact that you're rich. You, you should be actually grateful to the person who provided the money. So, in the same way, person is providing everything we are, and, or can be. He's allowing that to develop. So, why take credit? Give credit to the Prabhupada. Give credit to your spiritual master. But the best antidote is Vaishnav Seva. And chant the holy names of the Lord. When uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed benedictions to Vasudeva the leper in Kormakshetra, 
by embracing him and curing him of all his leprosy. Vasudev was a very humble devotee. And after being benedicted by the Lord in a very powerful way, he wasn't feeling so happy. Why? And the Lord inquired, why? And he said, my dear Lord, since you've shown me favor, now everyone will, will, will give me praise, saying, oh, Vasudev is so wonderful. And look at the Lord. We just blessed him so nicely. He said, then I will become proud. I don't know, get all of this attention, all of this you know, glorification. So the Lord took note of that and said, Vasudev, just do one thing. He said, incessantly, when it means without stopping, chant Hare Krishna. He said, if you chant always, you'll never become proud. Um, that's a formula that's not only for that for Vasudev, but for, for all of us, San Jose, more and more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I have a request from Asha Mataji for Maharaj, and she wants to offer a poem to Guru Maharaja's holy feet. So she wants to read a poem out to you, Maharaj. And then no. she's seeking blessings for everybody. No, no, don't read it. I don't want to get, I'm not here. I'm here to, to discuss the subject matter, not to hear from some poem. You can send me the poem. <laughs> it's not about me, this class is not about me, it's about, Maharaj, I have a question. So Ajamil, I mean, uh, we hear that how last minute he had the Namabhas and he he was, um, you know, he was pardoned and he was taken to Vishnu Lok. So what about his previous lives, Maharaj? Do we have any... Um, like he was he has he like accumulated a lot of pious or piety in his previous lives? Do we have any knowledge and info on that? I was wondering. You know, you know his early life. His in the, on the same life, but what about the previous birth? We don't have any info there, right? In Bhagavad Gita, probably. Bhagavatam doesn't won't go into that. If you want to okay. find that information, you have to go to other sources. But I'm sure it's available. The Bhagavatam deals with the, the main principles of bhakti. And also centers around certain topics, but I won't go into a lot of details about you know, something that happened before. Same with Prahlad, 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 Prahlad Maharaj. We know a little bit about his previous life. That's mentioned in other, other shastras. And uh, so who else? There's others, but it's, Bhagavatam really focuses on the theme, what it's trying to say in relationship to a person's activity. Uh, right. You'll, okay. you'll see Nar Narada Muni speaks about his previous life. Mm -hmm. In the first canto of Bhagavatam yesterday. But he speaks about it. Uh, Kormla Purana speaks about the, the, uh, the next birth of Vena, King Vena, after he was killed by the Brahmanas. What happened to him? How he went to Kurukshetra and got purified and actually thing self-realization but you have to you know you, you will find it in Bhagavatam generally but it's there instead of to do some research Lalita Mataji you have to unmute yourself 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your wonderful uh, association. So this is a question about chanting, Maharaj. Uh, so when we read the 10 offenses, um, I feel that invariably I'm doing all of the 10 offenses or even most of them for many years now. So, uh, I mean, when I have asked this question before, uh, the only way to overcome the offenses to the holy name is to keep chanting. That's what I heard. Is that uh, enough? Or what should we do to go to the next stage of not committing offenses to the holy name? Well, um, the reason why we recite them is so we know them. And when we know them, we should also learn what they mean. And then that means to avoid them. So each of the ten offenses has, has an explanation attached to it that gives an understanding of what it what it means to commit that offense. So uh, I'm sure you've been to initiation lectures where these have been recited. And uh, many times the devotees will explain to Prabhupada also in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, in the first chapter, verse number 11 and 12, in the purport, are both about the holy name. There's some explanation of the 10 offenses there. So, in certain places, you find, so yeah, you should know what they are. And because when you know what they are, then you know how to avoid them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maharaj. Go ahead, Mataji. We're saying something? Uh, no problem. Uh, no, no, Mataji. Thank you, Maharaj. That is true. 2.1.11 and 12. Uh, Maharaj, just I couldn't hear the number properly. Yeah, you, that's correct. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. May I add a little here, Mataji? May sure. I speak? Okay. Uh, in in answer to your question that you know previous life uh, about uh, Jamil, what I have heard from Gurujan and the lectures previous lectures in this series only, is that uh, Jamil was a Brahmin, and he committed an offense to a Vaishnav, great Vaishnav like who Parasar Muni. Right? He saw the incident of that standing on the shore of that river there. And uh, that's where he says, Parasar did this, like that, that kind of offense he committed. And that's the reason uh, he, he came to this Ajamil's uh, life. That's what I have heard before. I don't know how authentic is that. But actually, there are three such stories. I don't know only one, one of them. And this is the one. So this was just a little point I really recall. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much. You see, an association of Vaishnavas, we collect information from yes. everywhere. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. We have a quick question um, from, from... Mataji, Maharaj, Maharaj want to say something. Oh, yes, Maharaj. Go ahead. Yeah, I have, I have a, uh, a two-hour car ride and a two-hour plane ride still coming up today. So I'm still a little pressed for time. Um, so we can do one more question. I think after that we should end. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to end, but you know, yeah. I have a choice because this is a very... I know, Maharaj, we don't want to let you go, but I will quickly give one question, which is in the chat here. Mataji had asked a while ago. Um, uh, so... It's Harini Mataji. She's saying, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Please accept my respectful obeisances uh, at your divine um, lotus feet. Maharaj, after 50 years, we have to be in Vanaprastha mood. But if we still have our family duties, how to follow the Vanaprastha? <laughs> we were just discussing that this the on this past Sunday with a, with a large group of devotees, topic came up. And uh, it's a topic that needs to be explored 
much more. Vanaprastha really means to detach oneself from all family affairs and go to a holy place and live there and do devotional service. Or connect yourself with a temple and do regular devotional service. If you continue with family responsibilities, then where does it end? You have to, at one point, realize that, you know, time is short. No one knows how long they're going to have left. When you get to 70 years old, it says that uh, that's it. And what is it? Three score and 10, they call it. That's a statement in America. Three score, score is 20 years, three and 70. After that, you might, you might should be preparing for the exit program. <laughs> so, um, that's what I would suggest. But Vedic culture means when the children grow up and there's no more uh, responsibilities, they are now married and they're on their own. And then you can exactly retire from family life and engage in full devotional service. And then the man goes to a holy place, and the man or woman go, they can go to the same holy place if they want, but there's no more physical contact. And then gradually the man will come to the point of taking the sannyas, and the women will uh, uh, leave the body in the holy place and go back to back to God. So yeah, it's retirement. We retire from our work occupation. We have to retire from our family responsibilities also. Family life is not to the very side end of life. <laughs> so there's a pro, you know, I would suggest you speak to some very senior uh, prehastas who are in that situation and get more and more understanding of how to detach yourself from the material responsibility. Okay, thank you very much. My obeisances to all of the devotees. Sorry I have to leave it. My choice. No, Maharaj, thank you always for all your time and, you know, answering all our questions. We have so many mundane questions, interesting questions from everybody. Thank you, Maharaj. We'll end the call. Yeah. 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 Yeah.